Right guys, as you can see, transmission's out of the project here. Uh, the reason why that is, is because we had a rear main seal leak. Uh, as you saw in the previous video, when I took it for a test drive, everything worked good. Or seemed to with a new tune I put on. But then I came home, noticed a puddle underneath the, underneath the engine. Oh shit, rear main seal leak. And uh, I have to take, I'll take it underneath the car right now. Hopefully you can see this. So I got it apart. And, uh, and that's what it looks like right there. So here's our hub. I did grease this and uh, oil barbell is in there so that's good, the metering for that, that's nice. So I'm going to replace it with a new rear main seal cover and seal and uh, I'll show you where that is right here. So again, this is the old 6 liter one. So the lesson here is don't use old shit, just get new stuff because you're just going to waste time in redoing everything as you can see I tried to use it. And this is the little uh, ring they give you, so just check this out here. This is the old unit, so look how easy this slides through here. So there wasn't very much tension on our crank hub, that's why it was leaking. So this just, just basically goes right through, no problem. And you go to the new one here, and uh, there's way more interference with this, uh, with this seal. So you can just feel it. There's going to be way more tension on our hub to provide for sealing. So yeah, so it, it uh, way more resistance there. Yeah, so that, uh, you can tell right there. And when I measured it, our hub was uh, 3.858 diameter. And this one, this seal here, it's got about 15 to uh, 20 thou interference. So it's gonna have a nice crush on our hub or tension. So it'll fit nicely and there won't be any more leaks. So anyways, and also you can tell by this gasket here, it's a lot thicker, so if we measure it quickly, you can see, see what we get here. Yeah, so you get about one, 120 thick. And this one here, I can't remember if I used a new one or I bought one, but this one is like, look at that. See how it's way thinner? It's like 65 thou thick. So this one is gonna crush up against our two surfaces way better. So again, going against my own rule, used old shit. I thought it would work, but obviously not. So, bought this Summit Racing 92 Canadian. Got it shipped up here, so now we're going to put this on. Remain seal procedure. So, since I'm doing this, I might as well make a video. And uh, yeah, again, guys, don't use your old stuff, just get new stuff right away. And uh, they gave me the fasteners and everything. So, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to fix our problem right here. So, uh, so I'll put this on right now. Okay, so one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to... Actually, let me just show you something. So there is a, uh, a oil pan. Actually, if you look at this, uh, you see that? So the seal actually goes all the way along here. If you can see in the mirror. So we actually... But I might still put a bead of silicone, like right here, even though it's probably not necessary, uh, just in case. So we'll go do that right now actually because we do have rubber all the way because what will happen is the aluminum will just seat on that and then the long fasteners these two pull the pan up creating crush on this rubber lip here so it should seal even without silicone but I'll, maybe i'll just put a little bead on our plate anyways so we'll do that and uh that way we're sure everything's going to seal Get my uh, silicone right here. Just really super thin. I'm just gonna go. I don't need this, but uh, I'll put it in anyways. Just because it's such a big job to uh, 
redo this when you have to redo it. I definitely don't want to do this again, but again, I screwed up here, figuring it was going to be okay, but it was obviously not. So that's clean, that's clean. Put that on there. So, we'll put our crankshaft over here. And we'll put this up. Okay, guys, so this is a big moment here. Holes all line up. Basically slides in there, so we've got the silicone on the bottom. Okay, so the holes all line up, guys. So the next thing we want to do is we want to rotate our crankshaft just so this thing positions itself properly. Okay, gonna, so I got a I got a wrench on the front of the crank. Uh, let's see here. So I'll just I'll just rotate it around a couple times. Got my uh, my tube over there. What it's basically doing now is it's taking uh, it's moving that uh, cover to be concentric with the uh, crankshaft hub, and then we'll put the fasteners in, tighten her down. You probably don't have to do this because the crankshaft is where it is and that's perfectly concentric already. It's a machine surface, so you, you'd hope that there's no run out. But uh, I'm just doing this just to make sure. Okay, so we've rotated it a couple times here. So now this thing is supposed to be where it's at. And now we'll start the fasteners. And again, Start them up. And I'll get them all in there, not tight, and then we'll go back over to our crankshaft. We'll rotate it a couple more times, and uh, and yeah, we'll see how this goes here. So again, you want to have this. You don't want to do this job again. So again, these uh, fasteners, the spec on these is 18 foot-pounds, but I'm just going to snug them. I'm using a half inch, uh, a 13 mil or half inch. That's the size here. And there is a uh, sequence to uh, tighten these down, but not that important. So again, 18 foot-pounds on these, but I, again, I'm just going to snug them down. And nothing is tight yet, it's just sitting here so this thing can still move around. So we're gonna go to the crankshaft again and we're gonna uh, um, just So we're just rotating it around a couple times. Okay, anyways, so we've rotated it around guys, so that should be good. Uh, so what you want to do now is you want to tighten these guys up here. So the order of, of tightening them is basically... One, two... Yeah, they, they want to go around, so basically one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, doesn't not a big deal, but uh, that's what we'll try to follow. Again, eighteen foot pounds. So, 
number one here, right here. So that's seated. That guy's seated. So it's one, two, twelve. So just verifying they're all seated now, so that's good. Yes. Seated. Yep. Nice. Okay, so now what we do, we get our wrench here, and we just snug them. So again, following the order. It's supposed to be the 18 foot pounds, but I'm not too worried. As long as it's snug, it'll be fine. I'll go one. Twelve. Awesome. Okay, so let's verify. Twelve. There you go, guys. Awesome. So now we'll put our. Uh, so the spec on these guys is 106 inch pounds. So, but again, I'm not too worried. We're just going to snug this up. These are the long ones that basically pull a pan up into the crank cover seal. So. Last step here. Okay. okay, so that one's seated. So that's seated. Seated. Now we'll do these guys here. So we'll snug this guy. Good. Snug. Snug this guy. Snug. And then we'll snug these ones. Again, 106 inch pounds, so just don't go too uh, snug. Snug. Alright guys, so that's it. So hopefully, no more leaks. So that's it guys, so yeah, we've turned our crank to seat it, so it should be good. So anyway, so I'll put everything back. Got our flex plate here, this is a good fuse unit, nice and thick. Put this back. Let me just blow out these uh, threads one more time. Make sure they're clean. guys it's tight on there we'll just do uh, verify rotation one more time nothing's changed Rotating good, guys. So that's good. Okay, hopefully this thing's still rolling. So let's go have a quick look again. Where's my... Yeah, so here we go. Everything looks good here. So here's our torque or flex plate fasteners. This is clean. Make sure there's nothing on here. Get our uh, flex plate here. We've got a Hughes unit, nice and thick. As you can see engine side here. 
SFI, this is a good one. So we'll put that on. Right here. Okay, so that's all good, that's all tight. Got the silicone along the bottom here, even though I probably didn't need it. But we just put it there because like I said, we don't want to do this job again. Okay, so there's our so the torque spec on these is 70 foot pounds. Uh, these are the AR ARP 11 point 11.5 by 11 by 1.5. That's the pitch on these threads. So we'll get our Loctite here. So we'll put these in. This is the blue Loctite, so you can take this thing apart if necessary. Go guys, so it's good. Okay, so that's it. So now I'm going to use my impact. So I got it set to about 80 foot pounds, and I know that's. be close enough. Well, the torque spec on these is again 70 guys, so I got it around 80, so we'll see, it should be fine. So like I said, we'll start it and then we'll verify it with a torque wrench. Okay, so that was good, so now what we'll do, we'll uh, yeah, I should just actually just use this, screw it, we'll just go like this here. Just gonna get a torque wrench and verify this. I'm satisfied with that, guys. So we got 80 foot pounds. Timing cover went on nicely. Rotated the crank a couple times just to make sure that it was in the proper position. Seated all the fasteners. 18 foot pounds again, and that's uh, pretty much it. I think. Uh, and then again, these these ones were done last to pull the pan up into the seal, and we've got silicone. A small light silicone bead running along there just in case. So I think she should be good, guys. So that's it. We remain seal, which I should have done right in the first place. Yeah, again, guys, I was talking about my transmission here. We've got an FTI triple disc billet converter here. So this is a 3200 RPM stall unit, so it should take a lot of power. Should be good. 4L85E transmission, so. These things from the factory can take 685 foot-pounds, so that's good. You don't even have to put the HD2 kit in here. And since we're out, I'll show you what stuff here is my drive shaft. Big three and a half inches, nice and thick. Uh, we'll go to the other side, I'll show you the brakes. Yeah, so let's see my... Actually, I should just... Yeah, I think this light's good enough here. So as you can see here, guys, it's a four-wheel disc car. These are 11-inch rotors. From the whole hardware for this setup was from a Ford Explorer, including these tires. So that's uh, that's where I got the, the rear end from, the Ford Explorer. I think it was a 97 or 96. So. Eight point eight Ford, yeah, three five five gears. 
And what I did is, I'll show you right here. What I did here, guys, is I got I watered out those plates and just welded them to the axle. Then I was able to uh, attach the hardware backing plate from the Ford Explorer disc brakes onto this axle, which was originally a Mustang axle, so it doesn't have provision for disc brakes. So this is a cheap way to do it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you underneath the car, as you can see, it's super clean, so our rear main seal does work. I've had this car running lots of times since then. Uh, it's just that uh, it's on the lift now, because again, like I alluded to in the earlier scene, i got to put the master cylinder in there, and I'm still waiting for those bubble flare to 3 uh, tube fittings, so it'll work. So uh, yeah, so if you, I'll just take you underneath here. So as you can see here, it's nice and clean, hopefully. You see that? So there's no more, no more leaking, no nothing. It's awesome. So yeah, so that uh, procedure that, that I just outlined does actually work. And no leaks, it's dry, it's clean underneath here. So I can't stand a leaky car. So that's, uh, that's the reason I went through all that work to, uh, to replace that uh, rear main seal. So that's it. And again, underneath, here's the view. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's all dry and nice and clean. Nothing on the ground here. And I have ran it a couple of times. I even went to the car show. So that was good. So yeah, so it, uh, it's good, guys. So there you go. Uh, another uh, little video. So I can't wait to get the master cylinder in there so we can go out and start doing some burnouts and really testing this thing out. So again, guys, appreciate y'all watching and uh, subscribing. And again, thanks for watching.